Hello everyone, welcome again to Dubai Chess and Culture online lessons. In this video, I would like to show you some of the great games played by the former world champions, the greatest players ever, when they were very young. We'll start with the game of Robert James Fisher, uh, well known also as Bobby Fisher when he was at age 13. This game was played in 1956. White Pieces has the Donald Byrne. At that time, uh, Donald was already experienced player, master, one of the best player, and he was a former champion of USA. And Bobby was 13 years old, talented, young player. Game start with knight f3, knight f6, c4. G6, knight c3, bishop g7, e4, and castling. In this moment, why decide to go for bishop f4 move? Uh, instead of bishop f4, if white played the move e4, black could reply with d6, and we would have a king's Indian defense. In the game, white played bishop f4, and after d5, they transport the game to Greenfield defense. White play queen b3, making a pressure to the center, attacking the pawn. Fisher capture, d takes c4, queen captures, and the move c6. The pawn on c7 is under attack. Uh, Bobby play move c6, also possibility here is the move knight a6 with idea to push c5, but uh, Fisher decide to go another plan, c6, e4, white took a center, and the move knight bd7. Rook d1, knight b6, and here we have queen c5 played by white. Queen c5 is a little strange decision since queen is very exposed in this square. It's not a bad move, but still unprecise. Much better was probably to go queen b3 to keep queen safe. Queen is very exposed. As you know, the rule for the beginners, don't go out with your queen early in the opening. It can uh, later on happen something bad to your queen, some tactic. Black play bishop g4 and white play the move bishop g5. One more um, minor mistake. Um, let's take a look. Why did not castle? Why did not finish development? And uh, in return, white has a center, but he has to take care of the king. Bishop also did not move and castling is one of the rules, one of the main three, three rules after the opening that the player has to do. Bishop g5 is the move that white played two times with the same piece in the opening, which is also not recommended. Uh, the idea of bishop g5, uh, there is a, the, the, the reason why white played bishop g5, he wanted to prevent the plan of black. The plan of black uh, would be in case of bishop uh, e2 to move knight from f to d7, attack the queen and try to, to go e5, follow probably first by capturing bishop f3, which would lead to the normal normal game after on. But white wanted to postpone it and to stop it with move bishop g5 to pin the queen. But since black finished development, white did not. White king is in the center, white queen is exposed. It gives um, idea for black to be creative here. And we can see here from this moment how uh, Fisher starts uh, his um, brilliant moves one follow another. So the first one he played here was the move knight a4. This is free knight, but not really free. This very nice move, attacking the queen, distracting knight on c3, who defends pawn on e4. Pawn on e4 would be captured by knight and make the fork. So everything is happening like kind of geometric here after knight a4 and white was forced basically to move queen away. In case that knight captures after knight e4, um, black will probably take piece back because of this knight is also hanging bishop and there is also unpleasant check. Queen a5 later on that everything will be hanging in white position and um, white will probably be pawned down after that. For that reason, white move queen to a3, knight captures c3, pawn takes, and here again we have we have um, opportunity. Black has opportunity to capture this pawn, but then it can happen. Bishop e7 thanks to this queen and fork to black queen and rook. Of course, Bobby at that time, 13 years old, young boy, and you know young kids usually have no fear. 
So this is the good thing when you start playing chess at young ages and you should learn to play gambits, open things and uh, positions which give you these uh, chances. Because having no fear is a good thing for, for chess. Knight captures e4, uh, Bobby captured this pawn and gave this bishop e7 fork. He moved queen away, queen b6, and now we see that this white king who was on e file protected by two pawns, white and black, suddenly e file is clear. So black can very uh, possibility to, to put the rook on e file and to, to pin this and make troubles to white king. For that reason, white did not capture this rook on f8. White tried quickly to, to, to save the king and to make a castling with bishop c4. In case that uh, he captured this rook, then bishop will take again with the tempo, so black is keep on having initiative. Next move would be rook e8, and white will face a trouble with the king. Despite of this material exchange up for, for white, it will not be good position. For that reason, white decide to try to castle with bishop c4, but still it's late. Knight captures c3, and... Um, bishop c5. Knight c3, what is the idea of this move? Taking one more pawn and attacking the rook on d1. In case that white captures with the queen after rook e8, white will get the chance to make castling finally. But after castling, rook takes e7. Position will be really in favor for black because black has a pair of bishops in open position that are very strong. Also white is having isolated pawn, which is weak pawn in this moment because white has no any compensation or no any initiative for isolated pawn and position will be really in favor of black. So white did not take this knight and castle. White decide to go for bishop c5 and still queen and knight of black are both under attack and black, of course, gave check and king of one. In this moment, again, black has to continue initiative. It must be something in the position because white king is ruined castle and white pieces are not really in the harmony. And here in this moment, Bobby play one of the, the most brilliant move in this game and also in just history. So you can pause the video and try to find the move. If not, let's take a look of this beautiful move, bishop e6. Very casually moving bishop off exchange, although that black queen is under attack. What is the purpose of this move? In the game, white captured the queen, but let's take a look what will happen if white took this bishop first. There is a tactical approach now of black called smother mate. I'm sure that you already know what is smother mate. So the game will continue with queen b5 check, king g1, um, in case that king moves to e1, e1 that would be immediately mate in one. So after king g1, here comes the knight e2, king f1, discover double check, knight g3, after king g1, mate in two, queen f1 sacrifice, knight, uh, sorry, rook captures and knight e2, smother mate, king cannot breathe is occupied by his own piece and the game will be ended in this nice way. White did not capture this bishop in the game. White decide to grab the queen, bishop takes b6, bishop takes c4 check, king g1, and now everything comes uh, with tempo. First we have a kind of windmill with knight e2, cooperation knight and bishop, king f1, knight captures d pawn, first check, king g1, Knight backs e2, king f1, knight c3, discover check, king g1, and now black can simply capture white pieces and gain material back and be ahead material. So first, pawn takes bishop, queen is under attack, queen moved to b4, attacking bishop on c4, black did not yet capture the white rook which is hanging, he first play move with the tempo, Rook a4 attacks white queen and defend his bishop after queen captured the pawn now after knight d1. Black is having rook and two bishops and also one pawn for the queen, which is uh, absolutely winning for black. But still we can see the game till the end because um, this is important thing to know whenever you are winning, 
despite how much material you are ahead or despite how much you are winning, game is not over until your opponent does not resign the game, officially sign the score sheet. Because the worst thing you can do to yourself is when you are winning to start walking and to already collect your point in your mind and to re relax. Sit and win the game and please play safe and uh, focus because you never know what can happen. You never know how some small mistake, some small blunder can, can, can happen and you suddenly, your opponent give you stalemate or even worse, you blunder something which is checkmate or something like that. So let's just check how Fisher play very safely and good after this. H3, rook takes a2, already two pawns. King h2, knight captures f2. Rook e1, rook takes. Queen d8 check, bishop f8, knight captures and bishop d5. Uh, Bob is putting all his pieces to be safe and protected, not to deliver, not to get delivered any double attack. Knight f3, knight e4, queen b8, b5, h4, h5. 95 and king g7 in this moment even bishop is now free because it was pinned to, to move king g1 and here comes the force checkmate black force means every move is check i'm sure you can find a uh, easy way to win but let's check together bishop c5 king f1 knight g3 check king e1 bishop b4 king d1 bishop b3 King c1, and this is a lovely cooperation of all four pieces, two bishops, rook and knight. Knight e2, king b1, knight c3, check. And after king c1, the game finished with rook c2, checkmate. This, was a, the, this is also one of the most famous game probably of, of young Wobby, and um, a very brilliant one. And I'm glad that uh, you like this and keep posted with us to see in the next video, the next great player in young ages. Thank you for watching.